Hey, this is Al Robertson coming to you from the Unashamed Podcast Command Center for another episode of Unashamed with Phil Robertson. Of course, we got Jace along as well. And I have to tell you, uh, <laughs> today's episode is really something. Uh, Jace has been doing a lot of preaching lately, so uh, he's going to be center stage talking about cell phones, uh, talking about uh, a lot of uh, personal raw stories, uh, things that have impacted him. Uh, kind of linking back to that Tower of Babel thing that we talked about before. So uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, get ready. It's going to be exciting. Hold on to something. Uh, this is a good one. So, Dad, I know out of all the things that keep you up late at night, uh, are you worried about your VPN? Never heard of it. You don't know about your VPN? VPN, no. Your virtual private network. Virtual private network. Yeah. What what could it mean? <laughs> Do I have that? <laughs> well, you may. If the, the guys at Express VPN uh, warn us that uh, we're being snooped on when every time you go online, someone is trying to hack in and get all your privacy and all your information. It's just it's makes a constant, sense. You yeah, know, which makes, makes sense. sense. You hear about it all the time. Um, so what these guys have come up with is they call it Express VPN. And so basically you go through these guys and they firewall and block. You know, everything's about building the firewall to block out people trying to hack and get your information. That's what happens in the virtual in, computer world. In well, your day, this would be nosy neighbors, peeping toms. Yep, yep. Well, I have maybe we'll have one one big flaw. I don't care if they have my information. It's not that much. <laughs> <laughs> it was when they tracked me down there and they finally find out where I am. I'm down there on the river and they pull up and they're like, I don't know. I don't I don't know whether he's worth tracking or not. So mm -hmm. basically you're saying you have your own private network, but yeah. it's just, you know, it's right here on the hill. Right here out in the open. I don't care what, but, who's doing the tracking. But if somebody pulled up in your yard without you knowing it, which would be right. difficult, and then you looked up and somebody, and somebody was staring through a window – at you that you didn't know. That's as close to death as he can get. Well, that's that's <laughs> well, what this. That's is what in this the is. So in the world. in the virtual, they're world. trying to bump you off. Well, they're trying to get all your steals. They're trying to steal from you. So it'd be just like somebody looking in your window saying, "I'm gonna get old Phil shotguns," and I'm you know look over there. I'm gonna get his dog, and I'm gonna get this, that, and the other. So that in the virtual world, that's what they do. They come in, they get your stuff, they hack it, they use it for their own benefit. So in your world, it'd be looking in your window, I guess. So ExpressVPN, here's how it works. Uh, so pay attention, Dad. Uh, it runs in the background of your computer or your phone. Then you use the Internet just like you normally would. You download the app, click to connect, and you're protected. What if you don't have a cell phone nor a computer like I, I don't? Uh, this really I've never used them. You're one, of mm -hmm. the, you're one of the 12 people in America that this doesn't affect. Uh, so I would be harder to track than most people. Most people, yeah, right? exactly. I would say impossible. It, but, exactly right. Well, there you go. So Express VPN is the fastest you'll find. It costs less than $7 a month. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. New cutting-edge technology. It's uh, it's going to stop the hackers. So we're behind it. Uh, even Dad, even though he doesn't know about it, uh, he's in our network. So here's your call to action. Protect your online activity today, and you can find out how you can get three months free if you go to expressvpn.com slash fill. Which is always funny to me that there's always a slash Phil who has no idea what we're talking about. But Jace and I totally get it because, you know, we go online, we have social media. So that's expressvpn.com slash Phil. Find out how you can get three months free and check these guys out. Keep people out of your virtual windows trying to get your stuff. I am unashamed. What about you? So, Jace, you've been on one of these. Uh, <laughs> been on these speaking you, tour. You're, I'm not you've been on one of my runs. Yeah. This is how many times have you spoken in I've the spoken, last? I did the math thirteen times at some organized group in the last fourteen days. So yesterday they asked me to speak at our home church, which I've been there, I guess, since I was uh, a teenager, and they asked me about a month ago. It's the first time I've ever preached there. No, I've taught classes, and I was so, surprised uh, when you told me that. Yeah, I was shocked. I think it, you know, because you know, it was a long time before I preached. I mean, I was 
working there for right. years. You know, so I guess they didn't want to turn the Robertsons. They only to- want this yeah. particular crowd of the same name. They only, it seems to be, they want us in small doses, boys. <laughs> like medicine. Yeah, the small doses. You know what? It's like worm, like a good worm. You know what's crazy is I can't blame them. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> I only have one speech. I basically introduced Jesus. Well, the, the kicker is we, we, we do what we do free of charge. Well, that's right. You yeah, know? Yeah, yes. I always say that when I do You these, usually can ha- have a little more latitude to speak freely <laughs> If you're not being paid to do so, yeah, well, that's, I, I like that. What are you gonna do? Fire you? And look, I, I'm the guy who was paid for 20 years, 22 years, and now not. And I agree 100. percent It's it's far more enjoyable, even on my side. So yesterday, to do it without it, it gave me comfort that I, you know, at our you you couldn't get fired for I what can't you get were fired. <laughs> <laughs> and so people and look, most people that don't know me, like the visitors, they look up. Can you imagine what was going through their head Ooh. yesterday? And they're like. This is the preacher? Because I looked about. Some of them probably thought they're going to fire that old boy. Yeah, there's no suit. You know, I have my hat on. You're like, he's got a hat on in church. I mean, I have to have it because my hair, I couldn't be able to read without it. You know, I'm having a bad hair. You could do one of those Jep uh, samurai buns. You could have gone that route. I just can't. There's something about that that makes me squeamish. But since you got rave reviews from from your mother, I was across town preaching. Yep. I did remind the audience that you were on the other side of town preaching. I said, so we're doing something right. We've ended up being proclaiming with audiences. I said, how we got there, only God knows. I said, but Jace is over there right now doing the same thing I'm doing here. Well, it was was funny yesterday, so I'm sitting on the front row, you know, getting, I'm looking over my notes. I got my walk-up song in my ears, which was funny because I had it hooked up to my cell phone, and I decided that I was going to talk about Jesus and cell phones. That that was the idea I had. Because I have three kids. One of them's a teenager. And everywhere I go, I hear all these, these conversations about young people and cell phones. Yep. But I can't drive 100 yards down the street without seeing an older person, usually, who's like a cell phone zombie. They're staring at their phone at a red light and everybody's blowing the horn and they look up and that's why they don't even look like they realize they're in civilization on a highway that's dangerous and they've (laughs) stopped traffic because they're, you know, looking at Facebook. It's put them in another zone. Yeah, I call it, that's what I, I I, I labeled them cell phone zombies. What's funny is I'm sitting there, I have have a, you know how baseball players have a walk-up song and they do this to you know motivate themselves and the crowd gets behind it to hit home runs so i thought you know here we are in the spiritual war (laughs) of life i am not comfortable public speaking that's my biggest fear and i just spoke 13 times in the last 14 days so you're overcoming and i started my (laughs) sermon with that that the galatians 2 20 i've been crucified with christ y'all know the passage I no longer live, but Jesus lives in me. Because if it was about me, this is the last thing I would do, especially for free, mm-hmm. to get up and talk <laughs> about something I know is going to be sensitive. Because there are people who are addicted to their cell phones. And so uh, mom came up because she was trying to encourage me. You know, she's like, I love you. She is whispering, you know, man, I, I love you. I'm proud of you. You know, it's, it's weird. I'm, fi- I'm fixed to turn 50, you know, but <laughs> I felt like she was like, you can do this, you know, don't like be you're, scared. Like it's your first day of kindergarten. Like, come on, get on that bus. You can, do it. A you can do it. Sweet moment. And I said, well, not well, many, we don't have not many families are structured <laughs> like ours. I'm in my early seventies. I'll still be in my seventies and Al there will be in his sixties. So you said, boy, well, that's Jay's starting, far behind. He's, I know he turns 50. That's when year. you start yeah. raising, having children young. However, we're still running together, and it's been a long time. Well, so that's it's right. pretty good. It's not no, a bad no. plan. And I'll tell people what my walk-up song is because I know I brought that out. So you got your walk-up what, what, what song walk-up and your song? mother on your side. The, the walk-up song is, oh, I think it's Oh Glorious Day. It's the song that, that says uh, it's a new modern worship song. It, the, the tagline that got my attention 
is I ran out of that grave. It goes along and it they cut the crowd participates. They're like, I ran. Oh out yeah, of it's a good, it's yeah. a it's a great crowd. And it's so. my walk up song because last year when I went to Israel, it was, I, I, I mean I cannot try to encourage people to go on that trip because it's basically the Bible in picture form and you're you're reading especially if you have a pretty good handle on the Bible and the history of it all. But and I've shared this before, but. You know, I know that when I get nervous or, you know, I'm around, you know, some of these events I do, and I know y'all have done the same thing, I'm the only sober person there. And so it's not a church event, but I know I'm fixed to share Jesus. I I have one speech. I'll do the duck call demonstration, you know, and that's what I justify I'm getting paid for. But I'm fixed to share Jesus because I believe it to be true. And so whenever I have these situations, I think it's good to find a place that motivates you and, and and helps you realize that. So when I was in Israel and we saw where Jesus was, you know, supposedly crucified, it worked, you know, for me. It was in the general area. But then there's some tombs there. So you go and you visit the tombs. And nothing really strikes you at first. You go in, the there's a little hole. You go in because they roll a rock over it, but, you know, the rock's not there. You go in the hole and you look around and you're like, man, this is this is something. You know, it's carved out of rock and it's quite extensive. But when I stuck my head out of the hole, that's when everything I believe just kind of hit me all at once. I'm like, I'm in Israel. Jesus came <laughs> back from the dead. I'm sticking my head out of this hole. Dead people are in here, but this is what I believe. So that's why it's my walk up song because I think back to that moment, you know, when I'm, mm. I ran out of that great, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, let's get, I'm ready to roll, you know. So I march up there. It may not have been the hole, but it was a hole somewhere right that's around right. there yeah. where it actually happened. I mean, I'm coming out of the dirt and that's why I'm getting up here and sharing Jesus, especially in the sensitive issues about cell phone. But I told mom, I said in that moment, I was like, no, I'm glad you're here because I'm going to apologize. I said, you and your husband. You feel? I said, y'all are my icebreaker today. And in the, she didn't, I don't think she knew what that meant. But (laughs) (laughs) what that meant is, you know, we learned this in school, Al. You need something kind of funny that breaks the tension, especially with somebody that looks like I do. You know, when I get up, people are like, what's going on here? Because some people I could tell, they they didn't know who I was. They're like, is this guy actually fixed to preach? And so my. It also relaxes you. Yeah. As the speaker, that's one of the reasons why, which is funny because most people, that's the way they do it when they do it well. Dad is one of the few exceptions. I've, I've heard him do it before, but dad's one of those that just, he likes just, to come up and just yeah. punch you right in the nose. But like, Phil gets away with this. Well, he's Phil, different. You there's, have a presence about, I've noticed, I don't know if I've ever told you this. It's like when you show up in, in a room full of people, you have a tendency just to everyone gravitates and That's then right. you you dominate the room i think it's something with personality and pretty he's always been that way though oh, yeah. even young it's not just because he's older well i never thought about that i though. think no, it's a yeah, god it's thing it i is. think it's a god thing the term in the bible that i've thought of before and you'll see this a lot when you look at the details it it says that jesus spoke as is one who had authority yeah. but that that phrase is in there a lot about speakers you know they'll say he spoke as one who had authority there's just something about the way some people speak that people listen you, you know, remember I think there's a commercial about that in there when somebody speaks people listen that that's you remember when like a month that. ago we were doing eric metaxas's show in new york yeah and so you and i split you did the first half i did the second half with dad so why on air while we're talking dad is going off on some riff and, and McTaxis looks at me and he was like, your dad speaks like a man who's 900 years old. Yeah. And that was just the uh, way he put it, which uh, another guy at CPAC said, it looks like he came off the page of the old Testament. It's what you're yeah. describing. You know, now it's the look too, but it's just, you've always had this way, uh, especially men and young men. I mean, they always gravitate That's true. and they always want to listen to what you have to say. You, you know, you were a coach and all that stuff. So that was some kind of God thing he gave you. Well, for the rest of us, it's a good idea to have an icebreaker. So I got <laughs> up there and I said, uh, cause here I'm, I'm going to talk about Jesus and, and the cell phone. And so I said, I come from a family that has trouble communicating and the reason I said that, which in the second service I was in, everybody, a lot of people laughed when you said they that. They laughed when I said they it. They thought it was like 
it was a joke because we're always, you know, talking. And then I said, my dad does not own a cell phone, you know, because a lot of times when I've tried to get a hold of you, the the first thought that pops into my head is to get in my truck and drive 40 minutes. That's the best way to get a hold of you because actually trying to call you. Oh, it's, it's a long shot. It's a long shot. (laughs) You've got to be near the phone that's attached to the wall and uh, it's got to be functional. You on down here. You're the last part. If your phone well, goes out, electricity goes out, you're the last one. Or if the water's know. up, phone doesn't water's work. Up, I mean, it just yeah. happened. Yeah. You're shooting snakes. You're an outdoors guy. But, uh, and then I, I came up with your argument cause I've heard it, which is, you know, you saw the phone, you saw the apple on the phone with the bite taken out of it and you're out, which I did. I, I'd heard you give that speech before. And I was like, what? I wasn't making the connection. I just thought it was a little unusual that that particular logo, that picture, yeah, the you know, apple think, with the bite out of it. I'm like, hmm. I think you had a point once you see what's on it. So I, I made that reference, but I also said I've heard Phil go, you know, and talk about all the, the evil things that happen on the phone and the apple. And I just it, hear about them. I, yeah. I've never actually witnessed them. Yeah, but my icebreaker moment was, but here we are in a duck blind, and we're having face-to-face conversations. It's real good for camaraderie. I mean, that's one of the main reasons we duck hunt in a blind. You're out looking at God's creation. You know, it's just hard to think that this just came from nothing because we're paying attention to all the details. Having real conversations, you know, in this setting, it's awesome. And then you'll get on a conversation about the cell phone. What's funny? And I said, I got to be fair, though. Phil has a lot of good points. I think his heart is right. There is a lot of evil. I was like, and then he'll say, somebody get on the cell phone and check the weather. See when that wind is going to change. You know, then I'm like, oh, so there is something positive about Doppler this. radar. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll say, I was like, well, I thought you didn't like the cell phone. Then we're back on the rant about all this going on. Then he'll say, Hey, somebody call Miss K and tell her to get dinner ready. Yeah, tell, like, tell her to go ahead and get them so biscuits going. If I didn't have this cell phone, <laughs> we don't eat. So I mean, it used to be on a walkie-talkie or some kind of CB unit in yeah. somebody's rig, but I've just seen it grow exponentially <laughs> till we finally got out to the cell phone. I'm scared of them, but there's some Doppler uses. radar, bingo, or uh Tell Miss K we'll be back in an hour. That way your dinner's ready when you get there. Or a Pretty compass. handy. Remember the conversation, the argument we had? I look up, you know, I have a compass on my phone. And I'm like, here we are. Feels like. Huh? Arguing which way the wind is. Oh, yeah. They started arguing. Well, it's, it's on that cell phone. Like it didn't make the compass accurate. You know, it's like they didn't. <laughs> it try. wasn't a real And compass. look, Cy just full blown said, nope, that's wrong. And so I'm like, I'm not following this guy. <laughs> <laughs> when you're so looking smart. at a compass on my phone and you're like nope that's wrong I'm i like, never Sigh. doubted the positive <laughs> things from just sitting back and observing people who use cell phones i never doubted that there were positive things on it well and but, thank you. but that, i just look. observed it all and i said i think in this particular area with a device that people are drawn to, to the extent that they are. I just said, I think the negative in my mind outweighs the good. I think I'd be best and, without this. And you didn't want to have to. I don't. You didn't I, want to have to learn how to do it either, right? That's right. <laughs> I mean, that was a big piece of it. It seemed very complicated. To yes, what exactly. you just described was the basis where I launched. I said, here's the deal. I'm going to, for today, I'm going to ask you to turn your cell phones off. And what I found out later, not everybody could do it. Some, some of you them, mean some could, could not do they it. They couldn't do it. They so what they that's one of the things it. that scares me about it. Can that's you right. do without it for a little while? You say, well, how do you know? Because some of them filmed what I said and <laughs> they put it on their Facebook wall. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Which so give us, your, give us your speech, Jace, because I want to hear it. I was not there. Here's I what was... I did. I, I related the cell phone. It, it's hard to give my speech, you know, in this setting exactly, but I'll give you the high points. I related the cell phone to to guns, just like the gun control. You know, uh, people ask us all over it. When anything happens, they ask us because they know we have a lot of guns and we're pro Second Amendment because we always go to the argument. It's the human heart. 
even in the case of mental illness, their heart has been affected in a yeah. way where they're, they're using a gun as a simple way. It wouldn't matter that it's a gun. That's our point. It's the human heart. They're just trying to find the quickest, easiest thing. And so we're like, that. that's where you got, and it's unfortunate. So we're, we're actually pro-gun because we're like, we need other people with guns. And defend ourselves. Yeah, with good, good intentions to defend ourselves, and it, it makes sense to us. But then on the cell phone, we don't, I feel like, even people, and that's where I was challenging some of the arguments we've had with each other. And somehow or another, we think it's something that's like an organism unto it. Same thing. It's a place with information that you can go to, queasy, you know, quick and easy access. But it's the same principle to me. There are positives happen there. You combine the human heart and what you want with that cell phone, and you get what you got. Mm-hmm. Now, I read the first John 2. Where it says don't don't love anything in the world, and I added the the words wide web. It was a joke, but you'll find that because First John two has three categories that the world that you'll find quick and easy, which is the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does. Well, you think about it; those three things, if that's what you're after, well, a cell phone is instant access so but then on the other side i said but jesus is instant access and i quoted hebrews 13 8 jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever if you go through that theologically in your mind you will deduct and conclude that he is now if you're yesterday today and forever that's why he said i am they asked him about abraham he said yep i was before him they're like what because i am And so I read Romans 5 about we've given access, we've gained access to Jesus. The difficulty is it's done through faith. The cell phone is done by what you're you're seeing. Even though it's, you know, telepathically in satellites, you're looking, you have this instant access. So you have two things at work, but one of them is alive. One of them's dead. It's just an object that you're combining with your heart, which makes you realize that this one in your hand, the phone could be a trap. And so that's kind of the way I introduced it. But then I had a lot of stats, and you heard them, mm-hmm. about the dangers of cell phones, which is you're six times more likely to be in an accident, a car accident, from a cell phone distraction than you are drunk driving. Whoa. Yeah, six times. Uh, 84% of teenagers have a cell phone. The average age... I mean, the average time spent on a cell phone from ages 13 to 18 years of age is nine hours. It doesn't seem right. You think that can't be right. So then you start realizing they're not sleeping. Uh, The average age Mm -hmm. from 8 to 12 spent on it was six hours. So they're on here. And the reason I'm bringing up the teenagers. It's preteen. And we wonder why they think like they think and say what they say. That's what scares me. You're explaining why I I, I started backing backing up. But but now here's my point. Let me tell you something else before we get there. Because this is one of the unique things, the phone, that it's not, this isn't just an American problem. This And it really is a worldwide problem. I'm in Africa in a country called the Gambia. 900,000 people in this small African country. You know how many cell phones were in the country? 900,000? 1.2 million cell phones. <laughs> there were 300,000 more phones than people. Because so, some people got two phones. And look, trust me, this is Africa. But so even now, like, people have business phones. Right. And- so I understand. So a guy like me, you got to remember, when I said to y'all, I was just looking at the world, trying to get the gospel preached to the world. I said, I know this sounds crazy, me having never owned a cell phone, but I think you guys need to figure out. I didn't know, have any idea what y'all would do. You and Zach, I said, my nephew and my son sitting right here. I said, y'all figure out how we can get the gospel preached on that little black box. I was looking at it as a tool, like you said, for good Me because too. I had heard there was a lot of mischief. I said, well, why don't, and I said, me of all people, I've never even clicked on 
to the internet. Well, the good news is, based home. on that directive, we are now doing the Unashamed podcast that, where millions of people true. are listening. That's a lot of people. That's I, my I, point. That's I right. realized that the people were watching me speak because we live stream. You know when when someone preaches, so I realize they're watching it. So how many hours you say for the young people? In other words, if they had a a a sliver of time where they hear stuff like we are now discussing, well, right. that would be a good thing. Which back to my lesson though, and look, I, a couple of troubling stats were you know they had a stat where eleven teenagers a day in our country die in a car accident because of texting and driving or, or some distraction of the phone when you think about that that's 11 a that's day. a lot mm. look 1600 kids last year and this is taller and younger you said well they weren't on a cell phone no they're just riding in a car but the wreck happened because of a cell phone distraction who lost their life mm. and so which is troubling i mean this this is look i know you don't drive around town a lot Phil, but for, nope. the, for the rest of us in civilization you, I mean, Al, how many people do you see being distracted by their oh cell phone goodness. that's causing mayhem out there? All the, all the horns being blown. There's somebody looking at their cell phone on a highway and on a dangerous interstate or going down the interstate. Or you come up there and they're driving 20 miles an hour. And you're like, hey, I blow the horn. I'm like, they put a horn in a car for a reason. I blow it. They look up. Well, when I get up beside them, you look, they're on their cell phone driving 20 miles an hour. And you're right. Dad doesn't see them because he so, only drives on Sunday. Well, and there's right. hardly anybody on there unless they're going Not to Not only that, well, right. I told Miss Case, she said, I noticed a lot of people today on that front row or two, they all had their cell phones aiming, aimed at you. Well, and right. Here was the kicker. <laughs> I never noticed it. You didn't even see it. I yeah. never saw it. Hey, let me, well, just so, to, before you get back to that. Something happened recently to show you how little dad leaves the river to even see these things that we're talking about. So we're, we're in an airport doing some media, and I bring dad a Chick-fil-A, a, a spicy Chick-fil-A sandwich with the full, you know, the pepper jack cheese, everything. He's eating that sandwich. He looks at him and he's like, man, wow, that's, that is some chicken sandwich. That, that is good. And it and it hit me. I thought, Dad's never eaten a Chick Fil A sandwich <laughs> because the only time he goes to town is Sunday, and they're never open. Well, so it's like I'm watching my 73 year old dad of, have his first Chick Fil A. Truth in that. Everything you know, everything he eats, it ignorance just went, is bliss. He shot you know out in the yard. You know, I remember when we had the chickens. You know, yeah. I like, get a touch of those chickens, and then I was like, where are those chickens? And I wasn't making the connection. I, I'd get up in the morning, I'm looking for them, and then I'm. Like, what are we eating for lunch? And they're like, fried chicken. And then it hit me. I'm like, oh, we're eating them chickens we had in the yard. You know, just- but Dad hadn't forgot it because he was in the hospital uh, a few months ago. And he, Dan said, you want me to pick you up something to eat, Phil? And he said, yeah, give me two of them Chick-fil-A sandwiches, the yeah. spicy ones. Now, it's got to be spicy. It's got to yeah. have that spicy They're cheese. all good. <laughs> so, right, sorry, that's just a right. So, So I came at it from the angle, because you think, what are you going to pick on the young people now? Because I had, look, I've had situations with all three of my kids. <clears throat> now, two of them are no longer teenagers. But the first two, I gave them the cell phone, checked it, and – I mean, 24 hours later, and I'm like, okay, you're not ready for this. But well, with my daughter, because now there's more sophisticated apps. I'm not familiar with everything. I had never heard of Snapchat, and I don't know, you know? anything about it. You're right. And uh, but I, 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 I went there. I've heard those well, two words you, put together. Let me give you a what do you t- call it? Snapchat. Snapchat. Let me give never you heard a, of it. Let me give you a tutorial on Snapchat. It, right. it first was for people who wanted to cheat on their husbands and wives. Oh yeah, it's a private place. Because you got to think about it. And that's and, and a, the thinking behind it? Well, then kids took it over. The teenagers they, it had a way uh, bigger following with teenagers because you think about it, it was sold as a place for teenagers to go that's private, that you can hide from your parents. Oh, my goodness. Now, because supposedly, like, once you send something, it deletes quickly. Yeah, I mean, Is you can de- the- delete everything immediately and it's gone. But look, there are ways to get yeah, deleted right. material, and I've you know, I learned about that. But anyway, here's the only point I made on that. And there's there's parents that you can find ways to see what your kid is doing on the cell phone. I, but here's what I told the parents, and here are the issues. I wasn't picking on young people so much as 
The older generation, and I divided everybody in the sermon into two categories. The young were under 40 and the old were over 40. I was like, that's going to be our two categories for today, which, you know, had offended probably the, you know. Everybody around 40. the bubble. Yeah, people <laughs> on the bubble. But I, and my logic was, you know, Jesus was here 33 years and I'm giving you seven bonus years. I was like, in my mind, there was a reason he was only here 33 year once you get over about 40 it's almost impossible to teach you anything they, <laughs> just think about it <laughs> you, you, you tend to get headed. set in your ways is yeah. that what you're saying so you look at the people and the energy in churches you're like where is this happening it people are coming to jesus they're more open-minded usually when they're under 40 years old because they're just usually they're, under they're 30 more. right and uh i went to luke 15 and here was where my whole sermon and and theology came from Jesus came in the, when there was no technology other than, you know, papyrus paper and some ink from yeah. black soot. Word, word of mouth, 90%. <laughs> word of mouth. Of and I'm like, <laughs> are you think that happened more accident or God designed it? God knew when in society, because he knew we had a problem after the garden, which by the way, the evil one in the garden where sin started, you think, what did the evil one do? He created a setting that seemed like God was not around. So so looking at Snapchat and these places, kids think, and adults who are having private messages about have, having you know an affair or whatever, it seems like there's a setting where God's a million miles around. We have a secret society. We have a secret, secret setting, and it's actually in this bizarro virtual reality world where you can actually be better than you are because you can type and, and project an image of who you are that's what kind of is disgusting about you know social media in general yeah. it's actually not you it's a projection of how you want people to view you you know you're not going to put the worst picture of yourself as your profile oh you're going to go spend these women are going to go spend some money and they're going to make that project this is me, you know, because you meet these people in real life and you only see a picture because I've met that, had that happen. And I'm like, good grief, what happened? <laughs> but you realize that that's kind of the way it goes. So I go to Luke 15 and here's Jesus in this world where you think about what did Jesus do? He went around face to face. He put his arms around people. He went, he hung out with the sketchy, you know, even though he never sinned, he had a reputation, Matthew 11, you know, I mentioned that in my mm -hmm. sermon, I all heard it. He had a reputation for being a glutton and a drunkard. Why? Because he was dealing with shady people and sketchy. In their, in their yeah. environment. And he goes to Luke 15 and he tells why. Because people accused him, the religious people, who he argued with the whole time and had problems with. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this older generation, they accuse him, why are you eating with tax collectors and sinners? Well, he tells these three beautiful, beautiful parables about something being lost and he's after them. And he's... He's sharing that the reason he came to earth is he's the image of the invisible God. He's the bridge to God. God is after in his grace, love, and mercy each individual human being on the earth. I mean, to me, I've said this many times. If somebody said you could only have one chapter in the Bible, what would you go with? I'd say Luke 15. Because it's basically God in his grace pursuing human beings. That's right. Even the shady, even the sketchy. So <clears throat> I zeroed in on the third story, which was the story about the two sons. And so I linked that with the 40 and under crowd. Here's a guy, and this is what I've found from having teenagers struggle with the cell phone and meeting with people. Our younger crowd, the reason they're so hooked on their cell phone is they don't want to miss out on what the world has to offer. This is the, inf it's all the information and it's a connection with people, even though it hurts you socially, you know, because you're projecting this, mm -hmm. you're, you're typing, you're not actually <clears throat> with people, but you want that connection and you don't want to miss out. Well, that's why the guy left the family and went off and with the party and then the friends, it's same, same deal. He, he just didn't have a cell phone to make it quicker. He actually just took off down the road and, and found it. And what happened? Here's the father, representative, representative of God, waiting on the road when he came to his senses. You know, that son 
keyed in on those three things, the cravings of sinful man from First John 2, the lust of his eyes, and the boast of what he hasn't done. But it was a bad idea. But then the older brother represents the Pharisees, the religious world, who they're tucked in their room, no relationship with the father. They've missed out on the relationship with other people and helping you know, us as, as bridges through Jesus on bringing people back to the father. They missed it. They're trying to some kind of self-performance rules and regulations. So he brings them up. So that was the generation that I attached to the 40 and above. Because I said, here's the problem. You're griping about the cell phone and your kid being addicted to it, but you're not having a meaningful conversation with your kid at your house because you're in your room with the doors locked, staring at Facebook, seeing what somebody ate at Taco Bell. <laughs> it, there's the problem. We don't have the relationship in the interaction. So sometimes the, even what you're saying, or what I got from the yesterday and today, is that even within a family structure in a unit, you've got this division taking place and the cell phone becomes the same, you know, Satan uses it against yeah. both. Cause you know, it, it's interesting. Jason. But God uses it also. <laughs> We're trying to it was probably yeah. a good thing. Just thinking back, y'all were raised in an era, uh, all except probably Jeff, the youngest one, but he almost where, they're, 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 the, the, they didn't have cell phones. Well, I told Jace that. I told Jace that was why. I mean, right. y'all went in an we, era we, where it was not a. Well, we, that's we, why we can use it. I, I'm not addicted to mine at all. But would you? Could you still spend too much time on it? Sure. And, and but but well, back to your thing on the on the prodigals because that's a really interesting point. I mean, it's I love the way you use it. You're exactly right in how it parallels the idea about the cell phone. But even just that story itself, and you said this yesterday, it's not the prodigal son, it's prodigal sons. Yeah. Because actually Jesus was aiming it at the older. And so in in mine and Lisa's new book, I tell a story in there because it's about forgiveness. I tell the story of Jeps wandering as the younger brother. Mm -hmm. But what's ironic is, is that I too was a prodigal, the older, oldest son in your family. Mm -hmm. I also, you know, went off the rails for four years. What's ironic is, is when Jep came back, now Jason and I are, you know, I'm heavily involved with the church. Jace is as well. Willie's working with the college age, which Jep is now reaching that age. And so when we had this intervention for Jep, his line was to us is what took y'all so long. Oh, that's right. And it, and it really affected me. And I talk about that in the, in my new book. He was, but see, he uh, was thrilled with the intervention. Yeah. Well, right. And then Which I realized is, that I was the yeah. younger brother and the older brother. Well, in the look, story. I've, I was I've, both. I've had the older brother temptations. Cause you know, I've never been drunk. I didn't, I've never smoked dope. I've had sex with one woman, my wife, you know, on our wedding night for the first time. But, but the temptation in that is, is then to think that I'm better. I'm, right. I'm self righteous, or to look down. Look, I got mistake. I make mistakes in the in in the moment, like we all do. You know, evil thoughts and bad thoughts. But there's there's a temptation to all of a sudden think you're better than somebody because you don't have as much baggage. And well, that's who Jesus. He was zeroing in on that that older brother. That's right. You you gotta. You should have been involved. You should have helped. You should have thrown a party. You know, remember you said I didn't. There's nobody ever thrown a party for me. You, you kill know, the fat and calf. Me. You yeah. can't feel the kill the fat and calf for this, you yeah. know, lost one. But you wouldn't even do a goat for Why me. Why are you running to this yeah. sinful I've brother? Got an one, idea. But I've we had didn't... it all together all That's these right. years. Yeah, I've got an idea. We didn't throw a party for you because you're selfish and nobody likes you. <laughs> you know, you're mean <laughs> and judgmental. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, so, you would have had a party. We'd have, we'd have right. killed the fat and goat. So there, you got to get it. That's why I started off with "I no longer live, but Christ lives in me." It's not about me. You know. We're all flawed, but God uses us through his grace to rescue people. So let me get to, to what I was trying to project because it, it's, it's, it's two things, you know. It's this combination of, yes, there's a problem. You know, it's not the phone. It's young, ill-equipped young people who it, it's dangerous to get into something that's that accessible. So the older generation, yes, we need to step up and, and say, have a conversation about it. What What do you, you know, check them, help them. 
Teach them about that Jesus was face-to-face conversations. That's what we need. But look, you know what I was amazed at when I did all the research for this? Even the world, even the world, non-Christians, they don't recommend anybody being on a cell phone more than two hours a day. Because they said, you know what? When you see, they did the research. When you see kids get on there more than two hours a day, you see depression, you see suicides, you see cyberbullying, you see all this stuff that comes out. They're unhappy. And it's because they're trying to be fulfilled. They're trying to connect and they're trying not to miss out on something that in Snapchat, it's all evil and bad. You know what? I was amazed, you know, and I, I told my daughter that when I, when I took her phone away, cause that's a punishment because I want to teach her about real life. We want to have real conversation. We want to go to we'll develop some Jesus skills, putting your arms around people talking. And th- that's what I called that. But I decided to fast from my cell phone. Also, that's why I hadn't been on social media in three months. I was you know, wondering you, why you weren't retweeting my tweets. Now I know. Yeah, I have, now there's a few things that my wife said. You know, this is really good. Will you let me post this on your page? I'm like, fine. But and people think that we have people do that for us. No, it's no, either me or my wife. But since we the two became one, I consider that me. So that's talking, why I did. so talking to your daughter, you used yourself, and you told her that that you were actually backing off of it. I backed off too, but look, here's my point, and I don't want our listeners to miss this. What I learned is, even though I wasn't on it much, I was being distracted from what's going on in my daughter's life. So when we both did it together, guess what? After her two-week withdrawals was over, because it took her that long to just (laughs) literally... Just like an addiction. Just like an addiction. It is an addiction. We started playing cards. We started playing board games. She started playing the piano. She slept all the time. She hadn't been sleeping, you know? Yeah. But you know what? I I was now had more time to notice her and to have talks, and it's positive. And I feel bad that I'm... You know, sharing our struggles in the world, but I told her I was like, we live in the light as Christians. You know, we make mistakes in the light. God uses that to point people to Jesus. But I want to say this because I know, you know, we're about out of time. Two things happened after I shared that. I introduced Jesus to people, and I wanted to start the conversation in our homes about cell phones. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to come over as some expert. I wanted to share, you know, in a raw way what happened in my life. Well, after the first sermon, because we have two services, one's laid back, kind of traditional, and then the second one's a little bit more. So I had the old crowd and the young crowd. So in my two speeches, I kind of zeroed in on the older brother in the first one. I zeroed in on the younger brother in the second second one. So it was actually a perfect setup. Well, after the first sermon, there's a family that I really love. They've been in our church for years. And the reason they're there for years is, a young guy when i was in the pre-40 i was 25 i shared jesus with this guy he comes to the lord jimmy Lindsay. you know well his whole family eventually came to jesus through that which is awesome well they had some visitors from texas what i didn't know is they here they come on a sunday morning randomly to our church they see me getting up there and speaking i didn't know that they had lost their daughter in a car wreck because she was texting and driving Wow. And they just happened to be visiting. I just happened to be talking about that. So here we are in the parking lot. We're all crying once they, you know, said that. But, and the mom did the talking, but she was like, you know, we wish we would have heard something like this before that ever would have happened. It would have brought it to our attention. I mean, now there are a few years, you know, past, you never get over that, you know, mm-hmm. but it was kind of a group therapy session. And look, it was bad. I mean, it wasn't anything fulfilling about that but it's life and it's it's hard it's you know we have to overcome these things and the second story i wanted to share was the second service we had a guy respond you know at our church we have kind of the altar call like other people and and uh i shared jesus and i really didn't talk about the response months in the second service because i kind of went over in the first service i did i told the kind of funny story about the guy, he he responded to Jesus and he wanted to be baptized and we baptized him. I see him later. I'm like, man, you hadn't called me or anything. And he's like, man, I, I took a hammer out to my cell phone. 
I, I never brought up the cell phone, but I thought he concluded that if he's going to live a Christian life, he's going to have to destroy that phone, mm-hmm. which made me think the new Apple phone's coming out and it costs fifteen hundred dollars, which that. is which is what I spent on my first truck. <laughs> so look, I, hey, I had an so, eighteen year old kid that came to Christ, so he went back home to Kansas. He's like, I got to get lined out, so he took his cell phone, threw it up, and took a shotgun. I guess he wanted to, you know, do a little trick shooting and blast it. You mean it. without any urging from you? No, he just did it on his own. He told me, you know, I, same thing. I couldn't get a yeah. hold of him. He called me on his mom's phone. He said, "Which is weird because I compared the phone to the gun. It's not the phone, <laughs> but young, immature people new in Christ, they, they, they just think, well, I need to get rid of that. You know, yeah. It's when you kind of step back and look at it, they, they, you don't realize it, it's your heart and it's how you're, it's how you're using it. But it's really hard to use it in a proper way because it's just so easy. And I used to tell people that when people say, you know, I'm addicted to porn on the Internet or whatever, you know, because it just popped up. And I thought, yeah, I bet it just popped up. You you know, WW whatever. And then it popped up. Yep. But, you know, one day, look, I'm on there checking, you know, my stocks or whatever. And, and I have like six. Phil, Phil will have no idea what I'm talking about, but I have six screens oh, open. Oh, you're, you're, you're in six, a zone I've never been yeah, in. Yeah, six windows open, you know, and so at the end I was Xing them all out. Well, they're pulling up as you're Xing them out because you're checking for different sites or stops. Well, the last one is just, you know, a naked woman. I'm like, what in the world? I'm looking for then the Then you're X trying to get it out of there. Yeah, How do you get like, it out? What has, I? you know, I hadn't clicked on a neck. I mean, just full, here I am. And so I thought, well, maybe it did just pop up on these, you know, some of these sites. So let me get to this second story. Uh, this guy he responds, and somebody else is handling it. Uh, one of the pastors there, David yep. Brahman, which was, by the way, I shared Jesus with him. Another guy. It's right. weird that I'm seeing these guys who I remember when they were outside mm-hmm. of Jesus, I shared they just so happened to respond. And now he's a pastor. And you were talking about converting people and being shy, and there was Blake who was the first guy you led. Yeah, I looked up when I was was telling my story about being scared of public speaking. And, well, my best friend from high school, who was the first person that I shared with face-to-face, he was in the audience. You know, he responded, what, 25 years ago? No, 30. 30 years ago. But I love love seeing him back there because I just like, hey, the story I just told, there he is. He was in the crowd. I shared with that guy. He was my best friend in, in high school. So this guy responds. So they said, instead of, because he wanted to be baptized, and and it's hard to explain here, but the second service is in a different room. They don't have any water around there. So you have to walk to the big, you know, auditorium, and there's a baptistry back there. So they, somebody said, we'll go over there and baptize him if any of y'all want to come. So I guess about 60 people Mm -hmm. came over. And so uh, David, the pastor, he's, you know, going through the, you know, What's happening here? You're reenacting Jesus's death, burial, resurrection. It's a glorious day, you know. And he asked him, like, who's going to be the Lord of your life? And he said, Jesus, you know. And he's like, well, he asked a question, which I usually don't ask this question, but he said, are you ready? And, you know, he had told him about how to hold his nose. And he said, are you ready? And he went, I don't think so. And so everybody, just kind of a chill happened. And I thought, uh oh. And he, he started walking away, and, and David kind of grabbed his arm like, where are you going? And in his confession, you know, that we had just gone over, he said he had been 60 days sober. So I knew he had come out of the Celebrate Recovery yep. group. You know, he'd been, So I knew he wasn't on drugs or anything. He just got a 60-day tip, Chill. you know. And I was like, and so David, I thought, asked, he's like, well, what's wrong? And he said, my, my, my head's cloudy. And, but he was trying to get away. <laughs> and so I felt like now a spiritual war has broken out because I've never seen this before. I mean, I've been involved in thousands of baptisms. I've never seen this. He's trying to get away, and he's like pulling like, no. <laughs> and I said, hey. Well, when I said, hey, and he, and he looked at me because I felt like I just gave the sermon, the introduction of Jesus that led to this point, so maybe I can help, you know. And he stared at me in a way that was uh, chilling. And so I stared at him. And we had a, I don't know how long it was. It seemed it seemed like a minute. I'm sure it was probably 10 to 30 He's seconds. About, yeah, we were just staring at each other. 
And all of a sudden, I started sensing something just evil. I was like, it was like he was looking through me or something. He was just staring at me. And I just felt compelled to tell him, I was like, this is not about you. You've, you've been sober for two months. You just heard the greatest story in the world. You were introduced to the greatest being, the grace of God. This has nothing to do with you. You're surrendering to that right here. And there's something inside of you that's saying, no, it's not coming from God because this was his idea. It's something evil. And so he, then he tried to bolt again. I said, hey, no, you're not leaving. This, this is, you're not doing anything. This is not about you. So he kind of started quivering and, and David who said, well, maybe it was something I said. And I went, no, it was nothing you said. <laughs> I said, you did good. I felt like I was barking, you know. <laughs> and so, look, he started shaking. He looked up. And now this is what was amazing. At the top of his lungs, he said every different denomination at an altar call that I've ever heard. He said, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. But it was a little longer than that. But he was just like, as he was shaking, I looked at David and I said, do it. (laughs) He baptized. And look, he came up. And I'm telling you, it was like there was a glow around this man. I mean, it was amazing. When the roar that went up from the group, because I was just outside the door. Everybody I heard this cheered. Huge roar. Yeah, everybody cheered. And I looked around and there wasn't a dry eye. Yeah. It was one of the most powerful things I have ever seen. I had never seen that before. That is why when you read these texts, the truth will set you free, beginning with Satan. First John 5 and 18, you have the children of God and the whole mm. world is under the control of the evil one. And, There's no you, doubt and sometimes when you see that release from him, it's uh, sort of worthy of note. And what I, what's amazing <clears throat> is he had already responded at the altar call. He had already, I mean, he had asked him, is Jesus the Lord alive? But in that moment, he looked up, and it's like everything he had ever heard from an invitation, it came out, but it came out as he believed it. Yeah, This freedom, was freedom him is saying, a wonderful you know thing. what? I'm not going through the motions. I'm this, I'm doing it. And it was awesome. So I thought of all the times I've spoken in the last two weeks, this is what this is why we do. It's not about us. That's You're right. introducing <clears throat> Jesus to people that is that they're that lost sheep out in the wilderness, and God is using you to bring that Luke 15 connection. Oh, I just saw Jesus pick up the sheep at that point and say, "Oh Number yeah, one. taking you." So home. here's what's ironic, Dave. As we kind of wrap up, you know, you you set out. You had you were driven by the Holy Spirit to do this, I call it a wake up, you know, an alert about cell phones, the dangers you did with a raw personal story, but the effect on this young man and a lot of other people that will hear. And by the way, WFRchurch.org, because I know now you're going to be interested. We've heard us talk about this and Jay's, you're like, I want to see that. You can go to our church website and it'll be on there in the archives. You'll see it. So you have a chance to watch it uh, and listen to the whole thing as Jay's presented it. But that's what God does. And so you never imagined the way that was going to wrap. Yeah. But in that guy's heart, anytime the gospel is out there, it impacts. And so just to kind of bring it back to what we've been talking about. Last time we were on, we talked about the Tower of Babel. And when Jace was telling me about his sermon the day before he preached it, we talked about that tower. Yeah. And that idea of that kind of that global, you know. And I'll say that I mentioned that yesterday. It The problem with the Tower of Babel was that they were going to make a name for themselves That's right. instead of God. And I called it yesterday. I said, we have something else that the world has come together on. It's the cell tower of Babel. <laughs> the Babel which is what I told you should have named the sermon. <laughs> Very true, Jason. Which is true. So so that kind of takes us back to where we are in, in terms of our study. But when when I heard Jace's sermon, I was like, we got to talk about this on the podcast because it was so fresh. So thanks for sharing it again, Jace, and us being able to weigh in. Uh, we're going to continue on. Uh, if you want to do a little reading ahead, uh, Genesis 12 through 22, one of the greatest figures in all the Bible, Abraham and his wife, Sarah, 
so much New Testament stuff. So we're going to be talking about them uh, for, for the next little while. But uh, hope today was a blessing to you. Uh, check it out, WFRChurch.org. Uh, you'll see Jace's picture probably or the, or the sermon. I don't even know. what. Do you know what they titled it? It had no title. <laughs> <laughs> it's the lesson with no name. It's the man with no name. I thought of Jesus and the cell phones later, but I didn't give them a title, you know, because I was so mad at, you know, all kind of technology because they were like we got to get it for this and for that and i'm like i'll see you sunday so if you look it up it'll be on july 7th uh, was the day that he preached it so uh man we appreciate you guys coming along with us for unashamed with phil robertson so we're so glad you guys were with us today you can subscribe on itunes or spotify or youtube or facebook and be sure and rate us on itunes so that other people can know about the podcast